are grateful to the Lord for the opportunity to receive the new cost 104 they call cost and reward of discipleship by which the Lord is showing us with clarity that the church is called to the kingdom business of making disciples of all men of nations a person at a time and when a church leaves the discipleship pathway is going to go into other things it's going to be another gospel and so this idea of a crowd of milk drinking babes being gathered around man or woman who is super anointed you know what at the end of the day the lord will evaluate everyone in ministry by what you did are you making this are you a disciple ourselves and are we making disciples or are we trying to gather people around ourselves and so by the grace of the lord this lesson we're going to break it into two so that we can take the two concepts here because lesson five is that discipleship is the cure for four negative relationships there are negative relationship types people have with the Lord and the only cure for each of them is discipleship and we're going to go into you know the reality of relationship number one which is strangers people are in church people are born again but their concept of Elohim is a distant unknown God and they are strangers to him and they need a man or woman of God in order to be able to hear from that God. And they can't hear from him for themselves. They can't draw near. They can't have intimate relationship. They can't love him in a real way. And everything is transactional. Let's pray. Father in heaven, open our eyes of understanding and give us the enablement to understand this critical part of this cause. And let your name be glorified. Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So the reason saints are called to be disciples of Yeshua is that it is the only acceptable way they can receive and walk as sons of Yahweh in the earth dream. You see, Yeshua came to he from heaven to the earth not just to pay the price for us to be redeemed from the hand of Satan, sin, and the world. He also came for two additional but connected reasons. One of them is that the self-nature may give way for us to enthrone Yesh Yahweh wholly through Yeshua as a reason for our being and it becomes the center of our lives, the focus of our lives. He becomes the driving force of our lives. The second is the ultimate, which is that we may not just come to be members of churches, no, that we will live in the earth dream as sons of Yahweh in the mode of the ultimate son Yeshua himself is the ultimate son and we are told in Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 9 we see Yeshua who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of Elohim should taste death for every man for he became him of whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their uh, salvation perfect through suffering so he came to bring many sons to glory that the earth dream will be repopulated with sons of Elohim Adam was the son of Elohim before he fell and the second Adam came that through his death the earth dream shall be repopulated with sons of Elohim who have a vibrant personal relationship with him and men and brethren one of the reasons the Holy Spirit is given to saints you know in the primary measure called the seal measure is to enable us to walk in the consciousness that we are one with, with our father we have his DNA and we can discern and easily walk in the grace he wants us to walk we are told in the book of Romans chapter 8 if you read from verse uh, in, uh, 9 he says you are not in the flesh but in the spirit so if the, the spirit of Elohim dwells in you now if any man have not the spirit of Elohim is none of this and he went on and in verse 14 he said as many as many as are led by the spirit of Elohim they are the sons of Elohim that's the plan of the Lord and those who receive Holy Spirit of adoption no longer see him as a distant unknown God. That's why if truly we are disciples, we can never be lonely. We can never come to the place where we are needing people. 
when Holy Spirit is living in you, you are connected to heaven. How can you feel lonely? Brothers and sisters, do we know the Bible? It's not possible to be lonely with us being mobile temples of Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And our ability to speak to our Father in the privacy of our heart, we can pray without anybody even knowing right there where we are. We are communing with the Father. And the Bible tells us in Galatians 4, verse 6, because you are Elo, you are sons, Elohim has sent for the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So what are we saying? This is what Christian religion missed. When Babylon tried to sub divert the gospel away from personal relationship to rituals, performed inside buildings, according to affiliation with religious organizations. And though Martin Luther was used by the Lord to do the Reformation in 1517, products of that Reformation, beginning with himself, you know what? It didn't take long. They, they still retained some of the DNA of Rome, the DNA of organization you join, the DNA of building you go into, the DNA of priesthood, you know, professional priesthood caste. People join a ministry for identification and going to learn religious behavior and rituals that with which they will find favor with a distant unknown God. And so there are four negative types of relationships when discipleship is not taught. And because of time, we're going to take one of them, and that is the position or posture of a stranger. Ordinarily, this posture is ascribed to unbelievers who are outside the common world. Men and brethren, because they have not received the love of Yahweh, you know, in Yeshua, and, you know, today we're looking at John chapter 3, he is to them a God that is afar off. To such people, the prospect of Yahweh being near and relational does not register in their consciousness. And because they have not yet received the spirit of adoption, that is to say, they were not converted. They are, they are members of a church, but they've never been members of Yeshua. They can only apprehend him by their carnal senses. And that's why they are comfortable only when they see points of contact inside, like church building becomes a point of contact, incense, candles, religious robes worn by priests functioning in the order of Levi or Aaron and all those things, you know, in, in, when, they, when they see those sights and sound and the choir and those instruments, the pipe organ, they feel a sense of God is here. They hear the bell. They feel there is somewhere they've come to. When they go out, they go back to their normal stuff. Brothers and sisters, Buildings are not bad in themselves. They are good to own. But the, what we should know is that the buildings are given as centers for teaching and training, centers for equipping the saints so that they are activated and then released to go forth into the community to manifest Yeshua in their workplaces, in their businesses. But when buildings are programmed to be the only place to encounter and relate with God, they become religious tombstones where destinies of saints are trapped. Saints are to be the salt and light of their communities. It is when you see the saint in action in the community that you see Yeshua. But when we turn it around and limit Yeshua, limit Yahweh, you know, the Holy One of Israel, inside a building where you go in for certain hours a week. And I tell you, the Christian church is the most wasteful entity on earth. People are paying so much mortgage on a building and they're using it only maybe midweek, Wednesday, two hours, Friday prayer meeting, then maybe some preparatory two hours on Saturday, that's six hours. Then Sunday, maybe three hours, nine hours a week. Where did you see that? If, look, every organization on earth uses its building and facility at least 40 hours. At least 40. Some use 80 hours with two shifts. Some even use more with three shifts. 
It's only the Christian church that can use a structure. They pay so much rent and mortgage on for only nine hours, ten hours a week, and they can't even share with others. They don't want to share. They, they rather waste the hours. They rather waste the resource and put it under lock and key rather than sharing. Something is wrong. Brothers and sisters, the idea of children of so-called children of God switching off and living their life anyhow, Monday to Friday, Saturday, they kind of prepare their house Sunday. They switch on church mode inside the building and jump up and jump down and speak in tongue and prophesy inside the building. And they don't prophesy in their workplaces, in their businesses. They don't do spiritual gifts right there. It, it makes the churches religious equivalents of morgue or mortuary. What happens in a mortuary? You put things that are dead in there and freeze them. So the churches become mortuaries. Whereas the purpose of the Lord is that church, every congregation and ministry should be a spiritual hatchery of gifts and callings where people who may have been in, you know, in a comatose state are brought in and awakened by the spirit of the Lord moving and by the word of the Lord and they are awakened and they begin to know who they are and they get to understand their gift and calling and they are activated and released to serve the Lord. So majority of those who purport to belong to various orthodox, independent and even Pentecostal and charismatic churches across the world are now actively in this posture of strangers in their relationship with Elohim. Somehow they are now in a place where Elohim is distant where the heavens seem close like brass, they find prayer a difficult thing to do. It's a struggle. They are not able to receive fresh manna from the world. They study the Bible. It's like literature. Nothing registers. Nothing, transmit, nothing transforms their heart. Nothing renews their mind. They just read it like that. They are too busy chasing stuff, money, pursuing their ambitions. They no longer know how to enjoy His presence. They no longer know how to enjoy the three properties of the kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Those things are off. And those with a stranger posture cannot make sense out of the terms of the kingdom covenant, whereby King Yeshua says, the holistic well-being of saints is guaranteed because our Heavenly Father takes the posture of provider of care and everything, and all the saint needs to do is to seek forth the kingdom and his righteousness as is described in the book of Matthew chapter 6 from verse 19 to 34. And because they are strangers in their walk with him, they cannot trust him. They trust in their own devices and thereby, without even conscious of that, they make the arm of the flesh their confidence and unknown to them, they walk in their damning course by so doing. What is their damning course? When Adam and Eve fell, you know what the Lord pronounced upon Adam in Genesis 3, 17, unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Tongues and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, Till thou return unto the ground, for out of it thou was taken, for thus thou art, and unto thus thou shalt return. Genesis 3, 17 to 19. And this is consistent with what the Lord said in the book of Jeremiah 17, 5 and 6. Thus says the Lord, Cost is the man that trusted in man, and make a flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heat in the desert, shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness, in a salt land not inhabited. That's the terrible state of life, where we are relying on ourselves, on your strength, on your wisdom, on your ability, and there's no reliance on the Lord. So as they labor for the meat which perishes, these people are by the same measure despising and shunning the vibrant personal relationship that Yahweh desires from them. Remember what Yeshua said in John 6, 27, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him, had Elohim the Father sealed. And though they may claim to know and even claim to love Yahweh, their works create the opposite effect. Because they cannot trust Elohim who is afar off, 
they deny him the degree of lordship due to him. And Titus 1.16 says they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. So what is it our strangers will need to take note of? Strangers play games with Yahweh while supposedly in his service. Because their hearts are not handed over to him, most of what they think, what they say, or what they do are works driven to produce either material gain or prominence or fame and popularity. If they are elevated, it is to use prominence to draw more people to themselves and be a religious equivalent of the Tower of Babel where people congregate to be given regular shots of preachments that will you know, pump up their emotions they cannot convict them of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. So the word they hear, all the words that are preached, you know, in such places, can never convict somebody of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. You see, the words we speak are spirit and life. If the word is spoken with the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of, you know, trying to use Elohim to build a personal empire, it can only pump people up, make them feel excited. They can even have faith in that word and it seems to prosper. But it creates a situation where people are in the physical church, but not part of the church militant. And sin is their default position, not righteousness. And so Paul spoke about such ministers in Philippians 3.17, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. For many walk, Paul said, many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Yeshua, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind deadly things. I have 20 millionaires in my church. You know, such boasting, such things that have no value spiritually. The stranger posture easily makes sense grandchildren of Yahweh. Why? Because it is based on the principle that the leader alone has access to that holy God. And the people are unholy. So they need a leader as mediator. And he or she alone is super anointed. And in this environment, Christians don't know Elohim as Father. Rather, the best they can be is grandchildren. Because the minister is their mediator, is the one that can be a child of Elohim. So everything they need, whether it is choice of career, who to marry, when to move to a new location, or any life decision, they need to hear from the man or woman of God before they know what to do. And they do just that. And that's a terrible situation. Believers under the stranger anointing or who are strangers to Yahweh cannot have an intimate personal relationship with him. It's impossible. For this reason, the relationship of people with Yahweh is fear-driven because they are programmed to see Elohim as a difficult, hard-to-please personality up there in the clouds, watching out for every wrong move by believers and response with a cordial, immediately they make mistakes. It's a, such a terrible picture of Elohim. The religious leaders cast it easily. And in that, in so doing, they scare the people, and the people are fearful, and they still go further away from him. This merciless picture of Yahweh drives people to run away from him when they sin like Adam did in Genesis chapter 3 when he sinned. In verse 7, they heard the voice of the Lord come in the cool of the day. They ran into a bush. Adam, Adam, where are you? I, ran in, I'm, I hid from you. Why? Naked. Exposed. Men and brethren, that's why many people like that begin to hear the voice of Satan and the ministration of Satan and some give up hope. They are hopeless. And that's why, you see, op the oppression, depression, the enemy begins to, it's not worth it to live. Suicidal thoughts come because they are not being grown on the Lord. They are not grown to have an intimate relationship with him, which discipleship uh, offers. But they are strangers to him. The stranger spirit has ravaged the organized church, keeping mortals in bondage of self-deception. 
They want others to think that they are serving Yahweh. But they are not coming to seek his heart or his face. They have no interest in knowing or doing his will. They have come to seek his hands. They are victims of the most dangerous gospel ever foisted on humanity by Satan. It's called the utilitarian gospel. And this is one that reverses the essential nature of worship. You see, through worship, according to you know um, Revelation 4.11, is that we come to worship him in spite of he, he deserves our worship, our adoration. But you know what this utilitarian gospel does? It reverses it that instead of we living for Elohim, existing for him, he exists for us. And his job is to give us what we want. And when we don't get what we want, we jump to whoever promises this, we'll get it faster. And people are just you know, running from pillar to post and not able to settle down because they are coming to look for what they get, not what to, not how to lay their lives down. And men and brethren, this strange fire must be recognized for what it is, the grand deception that is back of the broad gospel called the Broadway gospel. Yeshua has told us in Matthew 7, 13, enter ye in at the straight gate. But wide is the gate. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be that go in there. So the stranger mentality, the only cure for it is discipleship because in discipleship people are encouraged to have an intimate personal relationship with the Lord. Personal relationship. There's no way as a disciple you can be lonely. It's not possible. In fact, the more you get some spare time and nobody's around, the greater because you can worship, you can adore the Lord, you can take the word, meditate upon the word, you can receive from your father. Brothers and sisters, all this mixture that is being peddled as gospel, the time has come to get back to the raw gospel, the truth as it is. And brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you, take this thing seriously. And by way of assignment, Please describe the state of negative relationship with Elohim called stranger. What is it? And two, in what way can it be said that to be a disciple of Yahweh, of Yeshua, is the only cure for the stranger relationship? You know what? The Lord loves us. Can we share this video, encourage others to come along and take it? And we're going to continue this particular study, you know, uh, next week, you know, Monday, and go on to lesson five, uh, lesson six, rather. I want to encourage us. Let's go verse by verse. This is a train the trainer project. If you understand it, you know what? The Lord will use you to teach other people. So if you have a question, you can post it. If you are blogging along, you have a question, you can post it. And there will be some brethren who can come and help you and come alongside you and provide the answers. You know what? By grace of the Lord, you know, let's get it right. The Lord himself has shown the way in his word. All we need to do is to hear him, obey him. Become his disciples. Move from believing on him to be followers of him, Yeshua HaMashiach. Live like the ultimate son. We are sons of Elohim. That's a relationship that is solid, that is vibrant. And that is for disciples to walk in. So we're going to pray right now and make a short announcement. Father in heaven, there's none like you. Thank you for your word that has come forth. Lord, we just pray that you will do something absolutely revolutionary with the world. Transform our hearts, renew our minds, and grant us the grace to walk with you intimately as disciples. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching, and we believe you learned something, and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time, and that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday, and then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website, www.gsom.ac, to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, 
you know there's an ebook we have free of charge everything we do is free but more importantly you can actually do your program on you know ebooks you can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdombooksclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.